in cooperation with the USGS, we operate 140 seismic stations in 10 states, primarily uh, to monitor earthquake activity in the New Madrid seismic zone and the East Tennessee seismic zone. Those are the two uh, most active uh, seismic zones in the eastern U.S., east of the Rockies. They're about the tenth of the seismicity rates that are in California, but nevertheless for this part of the country they're still important because they are the, the areas that have produced large earthquakes in the past. And now they produce, so the New Madrid produces about 200 earthquakes a year, and East Tennessee is about 80 or 100 earthquakes a year that we can record. Most of those, of course, are, are too small to be felt. A, a seismic network is a whole bunch of stations. We take the sensor and we'll go out in a remote location and we'll literally bury it in the ground. And it runs on batteries and solar panels to get its power and it records the vibrations at many different locations spread all throughout the countryside. And from the station, each station transmits with radios its data um, to some remote location where we take about a dozen or two dozen stations and combine all the data together in a remote spot and then from there we have a wider trunk of communications that all comes back here to the earthquake center in Memphis and together uh, we combine this, the data from all of those stations to get a, a picture of what's going on on the ground out in a, in a wide area and here we combine our data um, with other networks operated by St. Louis University University of South Carolina, Virginia Tech and the USGS and we're combining data, we're sending data back and forth every second with the, the National Center in Golden, Colorado. And so we work together, um, we back each other up. So when an earthquake happens, its waves spread out like ripples on a pond uh, in all directions. And so we record these ripples on this pond or in the ground on our seismic network. Um, and if we have enough stations, and if they're close enough to the earthquake, then we can get an accurate uh, measure of how deep the earthquake was. And that's also important, too, because the, the deeper it is, the farther away from you it is. And distance is a good thing, uh, because the waves die off with distance. The deeper earthquakes cause less shaking at the surface. Although you could also argue that the deeper earthquakes often um, are the larger earthquakes, and so they kind of offset each other. But by, by getting depth the, and not just having a map view of the earthquakes at the surface, the depth gives us a 3D picture of the interior of the earth. And that gives us another dimension that we can more fully understand the processes that are, that are going on that cause these earthquakes. People feel earthquakes, of course. I'm, I don't need to tell you that an earthquake happened. Um, of course, what you feel is you feel the ground shake. You vibrate and you wonder what just happened. Um, it, by having these instruments deployed out in the, uh, across the, the country in these 10 states, we're able to tell you what was the cause of the shaking that you just felt. Uh, you, may have, you may have felt it, uh, but depending on where you are, it might have been a, a large earthquake close to you, or a small earthquake close to you, or it might have been a larger earthquake farther away. You don't know that, but from the, by having the instruments and analyzing the data, we can tell you where it was, how big it was, and what kind of shaking everyone else might have expected. And we can give that information to CNN, the emergency management people, and, all the, and to the public. You can do several things with, with the data that we produce. Um, one is you can make just maps of earthquake epicenters, where the earthquakes have happened in the past. And over long periods of time, you can start to see individual faults. Um, it, for example, there's, there's, at least in the scientific community, there's the well-known pattern of New Madrid seismicity with the, the southern arm and the central arm and the two northern arms. And if we record enough earthquakes with enough stations, we can get accurate locations so that we can actually uh, image faults with those earthquake hypocenters. The other thing we can do with the data is by having enough stations spread out over a large area, we can do, produce things like shake maps immediately following an earthquake that gives a much better idea um, over a, on a wide regional basis what kind of shaking occurred where. Where was the greatest shaking and where was the least amount of shaking? Because it's not just a bullseye. It depends on the earth's structure and the, and the soils at the surface.